few hundred years ago, the unit of length known as the foot actually came from measuring feet. In fact, it was uh, recorded in some settings that you would measure the length of a foot of 16 men as they walked out of church on a Sunday morning, and the average of those 16 feet would become the foot as the official unit of measure. So you'd have some people with long feet and some people with short feet, and ultimately this um, breaks down to become a rather normal distribution. There are a lot of feet in the middle, and a few people with long and short, and a few people with um, even more extreme uh, long or short feet, and the average would be the foot. But what we would also see is over more and more feet, we would develop a bell curve, or a normal distribution. And this is also the case with many of our surfaces. A ground surface, a lap surface, a single processed hone surface might actually have a very similar distribution to the men going out of church on Sunday morning. We have lots of points in the middle and a few points that are actually kind of outliers or extreme points. Now this is typical of many surfaces, but it may not be what we want. In fact, what we might want are surfaces with more valleys. Valleys are often useful. They're good for garbage collection with debris and things, and they're also good for holding things like lubrication on a surface. So in practice, this normal distribution may not be what we want, but what we might actually want is a distribution that is skewed downward. We want a few more tails in the distribution down here, or more of a tail, uh, due to the valleys in the surface. No longer a bell curve, but a bell curve that's been stretched on one side stretched downward. Now the stretching of a bell curve is referred to as skewing the curve, S-K-E-W. We've skewed the distribution downward and there's a roughness parameter for this. The R-S-K parameter is skewness. And this is a popular parameter, but it has a few problems. The RSK parameter measures, or reports if you will, the direction that the bell curve has been moved. So our plateaued surface that has some valleys in it, maybe the thing that you're actually intending, is going to have a negative skewness. So this skewness is going to be less than zero as it's skewed negatively. A surface that's perhaps turned, it has more valleys, we can see kind of flat areas in the bottom, is going to have skewness greater than zero. The distribution for this surface will find that we have more points in the bottom, so that perhaps the bell curve there, and a skewness or a stretching upward of that distribution, whereas our plateaued surface has more points in the top and a, the distribution of heights is skewed downward. But the problem arises with the skewness parameter due to its math. The calculation of skewness, RSK, is actually a function of taking those Z heights and cubing them to the third power. So each data point gets multiplied by itself and then again, and it turns out that points that are far away from zero really get stretched out. So let's take our turned surface, for example. This turned surface, and it has a distribution that has most of the points in the valley. So I'm gonna draw the distribution of heights. Most of the points are in the valley, and it's slightly skewed upward. That's not unusual, that's a typical surface. But if we introduce one pit, or one scratch, or one bit of porosity, and have a deep valley, there's gonna be a, a long tail in this distribution for those points. And these points, let's say that's negative 10 micrometers of valley. If we cube negative 10, that turns into a negative thousand that goes into the calculation. The farther we are away from zero, the more significance this point will have in the calculation of skewness. And the surface that originally in red had an RSK of perhaps 1.0 may now have, with the blue valleys, an RSK of maybe negative three. And this huge change in skewness due to a single scratch makes things unstable and not a good choice for production.
So instead of looking at skewness, where it might be intuitively the thing you're going for, I would encourage you to look at the actual parameters you care about. Let's look at this surface in terms of the peak heights. Let's look at the surface in terms of the valley depths, not lumping them together as skewness. For peak heights, I would look at the ISO parameter RP, for example, which averages peaks over sampling lengths. And this is also the same thing as RPM in the American standards. Similarly, if we're going to control valleys, let's look at the ISO RV or RVM in the American standard and average the depths of the valleys. Maybe the ratio of peaks and valleys matters to you, but I would caution you in using the skewness parameter because single bad points can totally flip that number around and make it hard to control. If you'd like more help controlling your surface shapes, reach out to us at digitalmetrology.com. We'll be happy to help. You.